Good morning. It's time to start our uh, morning worship service. <clears throat> so if we can uh, start working our ways to our seats, we're going to open up with a song as everyone works their way into the auditorium. We'll start off with a song. Step by step. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me and I will follow you all of my days and I will follow you all of my days and I will follow you all of my days and step by step you'll lead me and I will follow you all of my days Good morning, church. All of those that uh, had an opportunity to uh, uh, participate and attend um, Faye's funeral this past week, uh, we thank you. And uh, if you had not seen it and would like an opportunity to, uh, it is on our YouTube page. So you can check that out there. I want to make a clarification uh, on our order of service. Uh, many years ago, uh, we decided to separate two segments of elders. We had an announcement section, and then we had our closing prayer section. And the reason we did that was to allow for the closing prayer or the end of services to focus on anybody that had need to come forward. Anybody that had a prayer request or anybody that wanted to be baptized. So that elder could focus on that attention at that time rather than taking away from that with announcements and things of that nature. So we put the announcements in the beginning part of the service to allow for that to be done quickly and orderly so that it, it doesn't take away from service because we've only sung one song. If, we, if, 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 you've, if this was the first song you've sung today, you're not ready for church anyways. So we put the announcements here so that we can get them over with so that the elder can focus on the body at the end of services where it's more important. So I often hear my fellow elders dismiss that or run it differently. I just wanted to make sure people knew why we did that. So with that said, we have a, we have a big meeting today uh, with the leadership. Obviously that will be discussed and, and many other things. But there are a couple announcements to make that aren't in the bulletin. Uh, Jessica Williams is in the hospital. She had a reaction from her medication, so we want to pray for Jessica Williams as well, or add her to our prayer list. Um, oh, uh, Mr. Nicholson is going to have knee surgery this Tuesday. Total knee replacement. He's going to be out for about three weeks, but uh, he is here today, so if you have an opportunity to wish him luck, uh, we'll try to get him into the auditorium, but right now he's in the lobby. And one other announcement, which is a, a, a great announcement. Uh, we're having a baby, and it's a boy. The Tuckers. The Tuckers are having a baby boy in June, so, uh, so we're growing. We're growing. It's good to see everybody here this morning. If you are a visitor, please fill out a visitor's card so we have a record of your attendance. Um, and if there are any needs during the, con during the services, please put them on a note and pass them in this when we do our collection. So with that, we'll get back to our song service and thank you for indulging.
Time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth a move can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. You gotta hold to God's unchanging hand. We gotta hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. You gotta hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in Him who will not leave you. Whatsoever you may bring, if my earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to Him cling. You gotta hold to God's unchanging hand. We gotta hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. You gotta hold to God's unchanging hand. When your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, fair and bright the home in glory, your enraptured soul will you. You gotta hold to God's unchanging hand. We gotta hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. You gotta hold to God's unchanging hand. <clears throat> what a fellowship! What a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms. You know we're leaning, a leaning, a safe and secure from all along, you know we're leaning, a leaning, a leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. You know we're leading, a leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. You know we're leading, a leaning, a leaning, on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. You know we're leaning. A leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. You know we're leaning, a leaning, a leaning on the everlasting arms.
morning. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. 1 John, chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. And it reads, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. And whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Please bow with me. Heavenly Father, as always, first we come to you grateful and thankful for another opportunity to come together as a body of believers. We thank you for this opportunity to fellowship, this opportunity to, to sing praises to your name, and the opportunity to, to hear another message from your word. Father, this week we know that we have many that are grieving the loss of, of our sister, uh, and, and we pray for comfort for the Surratt family and, and all the many uh, who are grieving this week. Father, we pray for those who uh, we, we look through our announcements and we see a lot of people that are struggling with health issues, Lord, and we pray for them. We pray for comfort for them. We pray for the, the doctors and the nurses that are working with them, Lord. And Father, we just pray for encouragement for us all. Father, as each week passes, we see a number of people starting to, to come back, Lord, and we are so uh, grateful for that and excited, Lord, and I just pray uh, that, that we have more and more people here to worship you each and every week. I pray that we take our responsibility to, to go and, and, and preach and teach and spread your word seriously so that we can grow as a body and that we can continue to do your work. Father, this morning I pray that you clear our minds, you clear our hearts, and you help us to focus on all that matters, and that's you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tempted and tried, we're off made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. While there are others living about us, never molested, though in the wrong. Father, Father alone will understand why you gotta cheer up my brother start living in the sunshine we'll understand it yes all by and by faithful till death says our loving master a few more days to labor and wait. Tolls of the road will then seem as nothing as we sweep through the beautiful gate. Father along will know all about you know, Father alone will understand why. You gotta cheer up, my brother. Start living in the sunshine. We'll understand it. It's all by and by. When we see Jesus coming in glory. When he comes from his home in the sky, then we shall meet him in that right mansion. We'll understand it, yes, so by and by. 
Father alone will know all about it. You know, Father alone will understand why. You got to cheer up, my brothers are living in the sunshine. We'll understand it. Yes, so by and by. <clears throat> Let's sing this next song to help us focus on the Lord's Supper. The Lamb of God. <clears throat> Your only Son, no sin to hide, but you have sent Him from your side to walk upon this guilty side and to become the Lamb. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb. gift of love they crucified they laughed and scorned him as he denied the humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the land O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb. I was so lost, I should have died, but you have brought me to your side, to be led by your staff and rod, and to be called a Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God, who oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Morning, church. Uh, what a great morning to come to worship uh, the Lord today. I can't think of a place I'd want to be here any more than here. So, uh, come to the part of our service that we're doing communion. If anybody has a need of a communion cup, please raise your hand so we can get one to you. Okay. In Acts chapter 20, verse 7, it reads On the first day of the week, we have gathered with local believers to share in the Lord's Supper. Paul was preaching to them, and since he was leaving the next day, he talked to them until midnight. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 24, it reads, For I pass on to you that which I received from the Lord himself. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Will you pray with me, please? Our Heavenly Father, we come to you with thankful hearts for the sacrifice of your son's body, which is represented by this bread. May, they, may those who take it 
taken in a manner well pleasing in your sight. It's in your Son's most holy name we pray. Amen. Continuing on in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 25 through 26, it reads, In the same way he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement affirm, confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me, as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us give thanks for the cup. Our most loving God, we come to you with thanksgiving for your son's blood, represented here by this cup. May those who take it, take it in a manner well pleasing in your sight. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. This concludes the Lord's Supper. We now come to the time in our worship service where we're given the opportunity to give back a portion of which God has given to us. In Matthew chapter 25, verses 35 through 40, it reads, For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry, or feed you, or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? Or a stranger, and show you hospitality? or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you're doing it to me. Let's pray for the offering. Our most gracious and giving Father, bless this offering and may it further your will. Help us remember that all we have given is given from you. May we give in a cheerful and pleasing manner to you before you. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus, no, not one, no, not one. None else can heal all our souls' diseases, no, not one, no, not one. You know that Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will God to the day they done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Sing it now. No, not one. We're singing. No, not one. No friend like him is so high and holy. No, not one. No, not one. And yet no friend is so meek and lowly. 
No, not one. No, not one. You know that Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide to the day it is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. There's not an hour that he is not near us. No, not one. No, not one. No, not so dark, but his love can cheer us. No, not one. No, not one. You know that Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide to the day it is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Sing it now. No, not one. We're singing. No, not one. Good morning, church. I'm glad to see everyone here. We're also glad for those of us that are joining us online. We're uh, excited that so many people are coming back with us. Uh, we may not, uh, the dis there's discussion about whether we want to keep the online stuff going. So if you're watching online, come on back because we're about to maybe be getting rid of it. But hopefully we'll keep on because we know some people still uh, are using it out there. And we appreciate those that are uh, watching with us today but uh, we want to we want to continue our study here as we have been talking about the last few weeks now next week I'm going to be on spring break I'm not going to be here with you we're, we'll have a wonderful gentleman uh, filling in for us next week but but this week is we're going to finish off this sermon series and then in two weeks I'll be back and we'll start another uh, series together but we've been looking at the three harvests that have been redefined by Paul in the book of Ephesians 5.9. We've been talking about how the Old Testament, the, the people of the Old Testament had three pilgrimage feasts set and designed by God that they had to do every year. For, and it was based on the harvests of the season. Uh, we, just like we have seasons today. And by the way, I don't know about you guys, but I got spring fever bad today. I tell you, I cannot wait up. Today is the first day of spring. And I'm feeling it. I don't know if it's that hour or what, but I need me a coffee about the size of a barrel or something. I wake up. I, I'm struggling this morning. Hopefully you're not struggling like I am because you're going to be asleep during this sermon if you are. But, but we've been talking about how the seasons and, and barley was the first uh, harvest in the spring. And based on that barley harvest, they had... Passover, which was the, the big memorial feast that, to remember the death angel passing over. And so they had that, but we saw where Paul has redefined that with goodness. And that's what we've talked about in the past several weeks. Then the second harvest was wheat, which led to God establishing the feast of Pentecost, the Shabbat. Some people call it the festival of the weeks, and that was early in summer that that harvest was... Uh, Enjoyed, And then uh, we saw where Paul again redefined that as righteousness. The new fruit. It's not barley. It's not wheat. Now in the New Testament, it's goodness and righteousness. And then of course, we, the, last, the, the third pilgrimage feast based on the harvest of grapes. That uh, is some kind, it's called the Feast of Tabernacles. Some other people call it the Feast of Booths. The Israelites called it Sukkot. And it, of course is in the fall time, the last of the pilgrimage feasts. And we're going to redefine that again this week because Paul did. It's not we're doing it, but Paul did it. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 5, 8 through 9, it says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all darkness, I mean, goodness, 
righteousness, and truth. The fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And so the third redefining, the third, the three fruits that really defined the people of the Old Testament, the barley, the wheat, and the grapes, Paul says there's three new fruits. When you come to Jesus Christ and you're baptized into Him and into His body, and you're living in the light, you're no longer going to be recognized by barley, wheat, and grapes and the, the three pilgrimage feasts. That's now replaced. Now you're going to be recognized. Now the fruit you're producing is goodness righteousness, and truth. The last two weeks we looked at goodness and righteousness, and so today we want to look at this word truth. Because if we're supposed to be, if that's supposed to be one of our fruits, we, know, we need to know what it is. And let me tell you, today in our world, truth is pretty hard to figure out. Truth is really, it's a hard concept in our world today. It, people want to know, what is it? Is it even something you can understand? Is truth something you can grasp? Is it relative or is it absolute? See, a lot of people believe truth is relative. It's just kind of whatever your truth is. You have your truth, I have my truth. Just last week, I was watching on one of the news shows. I honestly couldn't remember if it was Fox or CNN or whatever it was. But they had this one white Republican guy and this one black Democrat guy. And, and one of this, the white Republican guy said, and that is the truth. And the black Democrat guy said, well, you're, you got white man truth. I got black truth. And we don't have, and I thought, that's what truth is? It's defined by skin? I was like, that don't make sense. That don't make a lick of sense. We're defining truth based on what skin color is. The people we've lost are marbles, I think, when it comes to what this thing called truth is. And people say, well, you have your truth and I have my truth. No. Is it relative or is it absolute? Can it even be defined? Well, truth is, it may mean this to this person and it may mean this to this person, but... Uh, you know, I have, I have this, so can it even be defined? Well, you know, this whole thing about confusing what truth is, it's been around for thousands of years. It's not just in our society today. Our society definitely struggles with this concept of what is truth, but it's not new to our society by any stretch of imagination. You know, the people in Bible times, People in the times of Jesus Christ himself struggled with this same concept. Look at John chapter 18. John chapter 18 and verse 37 to 38. When Jesus Christ was about to be crucified and he was standing before Pilate. Pilate said, you are a king then? You are a king? And Jesus answered and said, you say that I'm a king. But in fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. And everyone on the side of truth listens to me. And look what Pilate says. What is truth? With this, he went out again to the Jews, gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. So we can see Pilate. Pilate's whole attitude was much of the, what our world thinks today. Truth is relative. You know, that's Pilate's attitude. What is truth? You know, Jesus, you got your truth, but it doesn't match my truth. And so therefore, it's all relative. That was whole, Pilate's whole concept. And fortunately, that's where our society is at today. Our society has the same concept of truth that Pilate had. What is it? Whatever your truth is, it is not my truth. To Pilate, truth was soldiers. It was armies. It was Rome. It was Caesar. It was political power. That's what truth was to him. And Jesus didn't have that truth. And so in Jesus' mind, or I mean, not Jesus' mind, but in Pilate's mind, it was only defined by your culture, by your surroundings, by your settings. 
by your worldview, is the college word these days. Your worldview, the lens that you look through. What a shame. Pilate had truth standing right in front of him. He was talking to truth. And he completely missed it. Because he had a completely different definition of what he felt truth was. He thought it was relative. And so therefore, truth, which had been revealed to him in his very eyes, he couldn't grasp it. Because he had already had his worldly definition already defined of what truth was. And so in his mind, since Jesus' truth that he spoke of didn't match his truth, there was no need for him to be taking this guy Jesus very seriously at all. So he just turned him over to be crucified. Because he believed truth is relative. What is truth? You can't define it. This is Pilate's attitude. It can't be defined. It can't be figured out. Everyone has their own truth. That's exactly what our world believes today. Folks, our, our nation, the United States of America today, in the year 2022, has a lot of Pilate mentality running about it. And so what is truth? Well, we're going to set to look at it biblically. We're going to set to look at what it means, or the definition of it. Whether we can do it, whether we can define it. What is it? That's what we're going to look at today. The Greek definition of the word truth is pretty simple. It means personal excellence. It means, this is the Greek definition. The personal excellence that exists in everyone. That candor of mind which is free from affection, pretense, simulation, falsehood, or deceit. That means truth is a high, is the highest form of integrity that you can. That means there's no deceit. There's no falsehood. See, sometimes people say, well, truth is just not lying. No, 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 no. <laughs> not, that's not the truth that the Bible and Jesus and God are trying to talk about. Truth in the Greek definition here is the highest form. There's no kind of falsehood. There's no kind of deceit. Lying is just a part of it. We were talking this morning in class, the difference between lying and deceit. Lying is when I tell you untruth. Deceit is, I may speak truth, but I didn't tell you all of it. <laughs> kind of hid some back. I, 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 you know, I'm not fully transparent. And that's, that doesn't meet that truth standard. Christians are called to give the fruit of truth. Meaning, we don't play games. We don't, we don't lie. Yes, we don't lie. But it's more than that. We have the integrity to not play around with little deceitful games. Well, I told you some truth. I just didn't tell you all of it. That's not Christian. That's not the fruit we are supposed to be producing. Strong, you know, Strong's Concordance. Many of you have Strong's Concordance. Strong defines that Greek word truth this way. He says, it's the personal character to habitually think and act in congruity with God's truth. God acts a certain way. God never lies. God always tells us the truth. What God says we can bank on. And so therefore, Strong defines this word as saying that's how our character needs to be. When it talks about truth, it means we are habitually, every day, wake up and say, I'm not going to be hiding stuff today. I'm going to be 100% integrity filled. I'm going to speak truth. Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. There's no medium ground. There's no maybe did you hear that? There's no maybe. There's no gray area. You're either seeking the highest level of integrity or you're not. Thayer, another famous Greek concordance, Thayer says, he defines truth this way. Again, it's off the base. He's a great Greek scholar. But he says, uh, he defines the word truth biblically this way. He says, a life of integrity, sincerity, 
and specifically a veracity to keep the will of God. These three definitions that I've given you are great definitions of what the word truth is talking about here. When Jesus, when Pilate said, you are king, and Jesus said, I came into this world to testify to the truth. He's saying, I came in here to tell you about God's high integrity, about God's high integrity character and that's what i came to testify was about is about god's incredible truth and he says and everyone who is on the side of me and god are going to listen to the truth you're going to listen to me because i jesus says i have embodied the highest level of integrity and honesty and truth that there is i have voraciously sought to keep the will of God. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is saying here, I have lived such a life of integrity. I've never been deceitful. I've never said a lie. I've never given a falsehood. And because I have lived that kind of a character, I can say, I am the truth. And because I've lived that perfect, sinless life, you can't get to God unless you come through me. Because all of us have. We've been deceitful. We've been falsehoods. We were in darkness and acted like the world. But Paul is saying, people who are in the light, we need to stop acting that way. People who are in the light, we need to live and achieve the highest level of integrity because Jesus did. And we need to produce that same fruit. And if you don't, you can't get to the Father. You're not going to be able to get to the Father because you can't go through Jesus if you're not producing that kind of fruit. Why could Jesus say He was the truth? Because He had personal excellence in His character. His mind was free from affection, from pretense, from simulation, from falsehood and deceit. He habitually thought, I've got to stay in congruity with God's word. And he achieved that. He led a life of full integrity, sincerity, and a veracity to keep the will of God. And so therefore, he has the right to say he is truth because of his life he had the right to say i am truth how about you how about you today can you stand up and say i am living a life of truth i produce the fruit of truth. Yes, I used to lie. Yes, I used to practice deceit. I did all those things. But when I was called out of darkness and I'm now in the light, I'm doing everything I can to live my life to that high degree of integrity. Is that the fruit you have? Jesus is 100% truth because of his life, which allowed him to go through death, burial, and resurrection. That's why Jesus is the ultimate truth. He lived such a life of integrity that he was able to beat death. He was able to take on all our sin, put it away, defeat it, and then be resurrected once again. That's why he is truth. How about you this morning? Are you practicing a, a life of truth? Is your life integrity filled, free from falsehood? And deceit. Are you one that when is asked the question. You tell the truth but you don't tell all of it. You kind of play these little mental games. Is that you? Is your daily character seeking. To voraciously seek after God's will. I'm going to do whatever God tells me to do. Is your mind. Habitually thinking. 
about God's truth. And so the question is very simple for you this morning. Are you living a life of truth? In other words, are you living a life like Christ? And remember how Paul set this up. It's all about bearing fruit. It's what people see in your life. When we look at a tree, we can see what fruit it is. We can look and say, that's an apple tree, that's an orange tree, that's a date tree, because we see the fruit it's producing. How about you? In the Old Testament, you knew they were God's people because of their pilgrimage feasts, because of the fact that they would take their barley, their wheat, and their grapes, and they would march three times a year to Jerusalem, and they would engage in these great feasts, and you look at that and you say, those are people... They believe in God and they they believe in in their God because we can see what they're doing. Paul said in the New Testament, goodness, righteousness, and that high level of integrity, that truth that Jesus accomplished, that's got to be your fruit. If you're a child of the light, these three things are what people are supposed to see in your life. I'm not telling you that. Paul, with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit from God, is telling you this. This is what you are to be producing. Are these three things what you're producing in your life? Is this what others around you, do your neighbors, do your coworkers, do people at school, do they say, that guy's a person of truth. When he says something, I can believe it. I don't have to be like, whoa, prove that. Show me on Google. Show me, show me, show me. See, what Christians shouldn't have to do all that proofing stuff. Because we just we should have a reputation. Of this person always tells the truth, and when we speak, people say, Well, that must be truth, because they've never lied. They never give a falsehood. They don't play games. Is that you? See, what Paul is trying to tell us is we are like a prism. The light of God shines in us. Have you ever taken a prism and put a light through it? What happens? It breaks it into all these different colored rays, right? Paul says that's the way a Christian should be. The light of God comes in one side and it breaks into three rays. And those three rays that come out are goodness, righteousness, and truth. The The light of God comes in us and then we just break it up into these three fruits that other people can see. Are people seeing the fruits in your life? And those are the harvest fruits redefined. If you need to respond to anything that the Word of God has told you this morning, you can come and do so. If you need to come forward and just ask for help, if you're undergoing some personal struggles, you can come forward and ask and we'll pray for you. If you want to put Christ on a baptism, we can do that this morning, whatever your need is. Let it be known. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and type out your prayer requests. Let us know what you need out there and we'll pray for you. It is being monitored. But otherwise, if you're here, you can come forward and the elders will receive you. This is our family time. Whatever you need to let the family know about I think sometimes we get in this mindset of this time, this invitation time is all about if we have problems. Maybe if you just have a great praise. You just want to thank God. Now's the family time to let us know your praises and your needs. So come for it as we stand and as we sing together. calls for me I will hear when the Savior calls I will answer I'll be somewhere listening for my name oh I'll be somewhere listening I'll be somewhere listening I'll be somewhere Listening for my name, oh, I'll be somewhere. Listening, I'll be somewhere. Listening, I'll be somewhere. Listening for my name. If my heart is right, when he calls me, 
If my heart is right, I will hear. If my heart is right, when he calls me, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere I'll be somewhere, I'll be somewhere, listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere, listening, I'll be somewhere, listening, I'll be somewhere, listening for my name. If my robe is white, when he calls me, if my robe is white, I will hear. If my robe is white, when he calls me, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere. Listening for my name, I'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere. Listening for my name. Stan's lesson. <laughs> oh, you wasted that one on us, huh? <laughs> he always gives me a tough one to follow. Is that something to, to take to heart? Thank, thank you, Stan. Very, very fine lesson this morning. Got several cards and announcements to, or uh, prayer requests to uh, talk about. We'll start with the cards, and then I'll, I'll read some things. Oh, we have a we have a card from Cliff and Brennan, or Cliff and Julie have a Nellie Pascual and Paul Cummings with them today. Where are you at, Cliff? No, we're just asking for prayers. Oh, just asking for prayers. Okay. Nellie's uh, had a successful knee surgery, and Paul's recovering uh, from some health problems he's having or continues to have so we'll add them to our prayer list as well um, as well as uh, Garrison Ganya uh, part of Ruben's Ruby and Lupe's family grandson he's having surgery on this 20 in 22 days of March 22 days of March so he wants prayers he's also moving from Arizona yeah, okay, that's 22 days of March, right? March 22nd. Uh, he's having surgery, and he's also moving from Arizona. He, he lives in Arizona. He lives in Arizona, okay. The Surratts submitted a thank you card. We want to thank, let you know how much we appreciate you. Thank you for the beautiful flowers, cards, phone calls, visits, and meals. Your kindness, support, and love is greatly appreciated. You are wonderful, amazing people of God, and we are all so blessed to have you in our lives, the Surratt family. Roger also handed me a card last second here. With special thanks, this extra special thank you note sent to you today holds more appreciation than any words can say. My Holmes Road Church family, for you're, for you're among the nicest people I, I've, I've ever known, and you'll never be forgotten for the thoughtfulness you've shown. Thanks for everything, for your prayer, food, calls, phone, all is appreciated, Sally and Eric.
Any other prayer requests? All right. If you have, we'll go to our Father in a special prayer and then we'll dismiss it at the same time. Father God, we come before you this morning just thanking you for the opportunity to be here, Lord. Thanking you for awaking us from our slumber and, and bringing us to this worship service. We pray that it was uplifting to our members and encouraging to anyone that may be visiting to allow them to seek more information or to return in as, at another time. Father, we just love you and, and honor you and, and thank you for this privilege that you've given us. Father, we pray for Jessica Williams, dear Father, as she is in the hospital struggling with some medication problems. We pray that you be with her and be with those who are attending to her. We pray for Neil, who will be having knee surgery this Tuesday. We ask that it goes well for him and that his recovery is quick. We give joy and thanks for the news of the Tucker baby. And we, we pray that you be with Jasmine, you keep her healthy throughout her term, and that you bring a new baby boy into this life. We pray for Michelle Hill as she has a wounded wing. She broke her arm this weekend and she's in a cast and further analysis. But she's a soldier of God and she's here fighting and she's here in her discomfort and we thank you for that and we just ask that you be with her, Lord. And we pray for, for Garrison Gagne, Lord, as he is... Uh, as he is having surgery on the 22nd of March. We just ask that you be with that procedure and that it, it goes well and that his recovery time is short. And Nellie Pesquale and Paul Cummins, Lord, we pray for the, the friends of, of Cliff and Julie Brandon. We ask that you be with them in their needs, that you comfort and guide them. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we had to celebrate face her at life this week. We hope it was enjoyable for all in attendance. We hope that it was consistent with your word and we hope that the family has been able to grieve through, work through the grief process and continue to do so, Lord. Father, we thank you for all the blessings in our lives, those that we know of, those that we don't know of, those that we don't even realize and those that we work hard to achieve. We ask that you continue to be with this church, you be with its members, you be with its body, you be with each soul, and help us, Lord, to find those souls that are drifting in the world, those souls that don't realize the truth is you, and the only way to the truth is through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you help us to guide and direct them and give them encouragement to come into the fold. Thank you again for the message this morning. May we all apply it to our lives. May we take the challenge of truth and live it each day. We all fall short, Lord, but we know we can fall back on you and your son, Jesus, and you will pick us up. But help us, Lord, help us not to fall. Help us to be strong in our lives. Help us to be different. Help us to stand out in the crowd. Help us to be the one that says, there goes a Christian. Let us be recognized. Let us love each other. Let us love together. And let us be safe as we leave this place and until we return again at our next appointed time. In your son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Gentlemen of the church, sharply at noon, thank you. Yes! Hey, how you doing, buddy? Chris, what's yours? Carl? Thank you, brother. What are you here with?